In this problem, we're told that the motor M pulls in an attached rope with an acceleration of 8 meters per second squared. Determine the towing force exerted by the motor on the rope in order to move the 100 kilogram crate up the inclined plane. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the plane is 0.2. Neglect the mass of the pulleys and the rope. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is create a free body diagram. So what I'm going to do is actually create the free body diagram of the crate and cut through these tension cables. So this is going to be my free body diagram. So what I can do is uh, redraw this picture. So I'll make the free body diagram over here. Since the tension actually travels through the cable, the tension values for each, each part of the cable is going to be the same. So therefore the tension right here is going to be T, this is going to be T, and this is going to be T as well. And there is friction acting on the surface, so therefore this is going to be some frictional force um, FK. And it acts in the opposite direction of movement, and we're, it, sa it says that the crate is moving up the incline, therefore it's moving in that direction, and hence the kinetic friction is acting in the opposite direction. And then we also have a weight force, so this is going to be W, like that, and the angle at which this makes with the horizontal or the vertical line is going to be theta, and that's using the basic uh, idea of inclined planes. So the next thing I'm going to do is define a coordinate um, system. So this is going to be the positive x-axis, and this is going to be the positive y-axis. Since we know that the object is accelerating in the x direction, we don't necessarily have to look in uh, look into the forces in the y direction because we actually I forgot another force, which is actually going to be the normal force, um, and that's because the normal force and the weight force actually cancel each other out in the y direction. So we don't necessarily have to worry about forces in the y direction. We could just worry about the forces in the x direction. So we're going to sum the forces in the x direction and we're going to call this direction up the incline positive. So we're going to say that 3t minus w sine theta equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. And in this case, we know that the acceleration of x is due to the crate. So I'm going to rewrite this as the mass times the acceleration of the crate. Now our goal is to actually find the acceleration of the crate, which is probably the most difficult part of this problem. So to do that, we, we are given actually the acceleration of this point, AP, which goes in that direction. So somehow we have to relate AP, or the acceleration of this point P, to the acceleration of the crate. And the way to do that is actually to create datums and sum the lengths of the rope and then take time derivatives of those various lengths to find those accelerations um, of the crate and the point. So the first thing I'm going to do is define a datum right here. And the reason why I want to define this datum is that so we can um, add up the length of the rope, the net length of the rope, I should say. And the reason why we can use this as a datum is because this is fixed, because this right here does not change with time. Um, it is a fixed rope, and it is connected to even a fixed reference frame, which is this outer region right here. So we're going to say that this length from here to here, and this goes through the middle, to that point P, we're going to call this S of the crate or the distance of the crate from this point. And then we're going to use this length right here, this datum. So I'll define this as the center of the motor to that point, And we're going to call this SP. So now what we're going to do is actually count the length or add up the net length of the rope. So we're going to say this length right here plus this length right here, plus this length right here, minus this length right here to get the full length of this rope. So we're going to call the length of the rope L, and we're going to add up this length, SC, plus this length, plus this length, which are just multiples of SC. So we're going to say this is 3SC minus this length right here. So that gives you the net change of this rope 
and that's going to be um, SP. So from there we could just take time derivatives. So the first derivative is going to be equal to um, zero. So the derivative of the length of the rope is zero since the length of the rope does not change with time. And then the derivative of displacement is going to be VC or the velocity of the crate minus the velocity of the point P. And then we can take time derivatives again. So this is going to be three times the acceleration of the crate minus the acceleration of the point. Therefore, we could say that the acceleration of the crate is equal to a third of the acceleration of the point. So this value can now be used to solve this equation. So we could just plug this value into that equation. And to find the towing force, that's basically the tension force, T, so we just have to solve for T. So that is going to be the towing force. This is M over 9 times AP plus W over 3 times sine of theta. So all we have to do is plug in the values. So then what we get is the towing force equals 366.358 newtons. So that is the towing force of the motor onto the crate. I believe this problem is pretty straightforward. Probably the most difficult part, probably the most difficult two parts, is actually defining your free body diagram, understanding that you can cut through these ropes and define the tension forces and knowing that the tension itself doesn't change along the rope, therefore the tension forces are the same across each cross section. So that's one thing. So defining a correct free body diagram is probably one of the challenges. Another challenge is actually defining your datums and using the concept of the length of the rope and the velocities and accelerations of each point onto the rope and how they relate to each other. So just summing the length of the rope and then taking the time derivatives is probably the other aspect of this problem that makes it difficult. So understanding those two things should, uh, is probably the most fundamental thing in this problem. From there, you can just apply the basic idea of Newton's second law to find what you're looking for, which is going to be the tension in the rope. This problem is pretty straightforward. Just understand those two fundamental things and you should be all right. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.